Hey everyone, it's Zach Beck. Investing can be difficult, and oftentimes when you're first getting started, you might not know what to do. So what I want to do in this video is break down in detail seven investing mistakes for beginners so that way you can understand the best way to allocate your finances to help you achieve your long-term financial goals. So let's take our time, dive in the details, and jump into it right now. The first investing mistake that you want to avoid is holding cash in a retirement account. This one breaks my heart because oftentimes when you're just getting started in your career, you might be hearing the term Roth IRA or 401k thrown around and you think to yourself, well, I know I need to open one of those up in order to actually start saving for my retirement. So finally, you get to the point where you actually put money into your retirement account by opening up a Roth IRA or a 401k, but then you just let the cash sit there instead of actually having the money do anything. Because you might be sitting back and thinking, wow, I opened my Roth IRA, I opened my 401k or whatever it is, so you're done and then you're gonna have retirement funds down the road. But the truth is your money is just sitting there in the same way that it would have been if you had it in your bank account. Because a Roth IRA is not the investment itself. A Roth IRA or a 401k is simply an account that you can use as a tax advantage to go and invest. So if you have money sitting in your Roth IRA or your 401k and it says a settlement account, money market, core or cash, then you do not have anything that is happening with your money right now. So you wanna make sure that you actually take those funds and invest them into the stock market. Now, where you invest them into the stock market is really up to your discretion. I generally recommend using an index fund approach. We're investing into the broad base of stocks that actually exist in the stock market, generally like the S&P 500 or the total stock market index. You can use stock market indexes like the Vanguard total stock market index and others that would actually help you to be able to invest in a broader percentage of the stock market as a whole. Now, depending upon your retirement date, if you're earlier on in your stage right now in your career, you might want to have a higher percentage of your stock, your investments going into stocks and a lower percentage going into bonds. Right now, I have a 90-10 ratio. 90% goes into stocks through my retirement accounts. 10% goes into bonds. So it's just what's best for you. Generally, as you get closer towards retirement date, you might adjust that more like a 70-30 split or 60-40 split, or you can select a target date retirement index fund as well, where it basically just adjusts over time and you don't have to think about it again but make sure that if you just have your cash sitting in your retirement account right now, it is not going to help you at all. The second investment mistake is picking individual stocks. Now this one pains me a little bit to say because I know that getting started with investing is really the first step towards having a secure financial future. So I don't want to dissuade you or prevent you from actually starting to invest because I think that's a good thing to do. However, if you're going to be investing more than 10% of your overall portfolio into individual stocks, then I would consider that to be a mistake because generally speaking, we are not as adept or as knowledgeable about how we can actually select stocks that are going to have a long-term track record that will produce the type of results that you're wanting. For example, generally speaking, when you invest into an index fund, that is going to track a lot better than you're going to do with any individual company. That is because the stock market is very efficient. What we find in our capitalistic society is that companies come and go. They generally speaking are gonna be really good one day, maybe not so good another day. You can probably think of various companies that have existed over the course of your lifetime that no longer exist today because technology has advanced, the market needs have changed. Just this last year alone with the pandemic, there was so much that changed from a technological logical perspective that made certain companies obsolete and elevated others. But who knows what's going to happen 10 years down the road where some of the companies that are popular right now might not be popular down the line. Furthermore, there's generally a lot of volatility that is reflected in the stock market as well. And you as an individual or I as an individual are not as adept or as quick as being able to time those things and actually make sure that we're investing at the proper time. So if you're going ahead and picking individual stocks right now to get started, I think that's actually a totally fine thing to do as long as it's less than 10% of your overall portfolio. As a matter of fact, I do this myself a little bit, but generally speaking, it's a very small percentage of my overall portfolio more like one to 5%. And if you wanna try that, I do have links in the description for Robinhood and Webull. If you actually wanna go and claim free stocks down below, you can do that. If you deposit $100 on the platform for Webull, they will give you two free stocks worth up to $1,400. So you can go ahead and do that and Robinhood will give you a free stock as well just by signing up. So that's a way to get started. But once again, the index fund approach is gonna be much more what you wanna do for your broader portion of your portfolio as a whole. 
The third investing mistake that we want to avoid is chasing past performance because past performance is not an indication of what's going to happen in the future. So from that standpoint alone, we want to be very cautious about how companies have done previously and then trying to have this bandwagon mentality where then we jump on and say, oh, now it's going to go to the moon or it's going to do something like that. For example, if you saw GameStop, what happened with that recent stock saga, that stock started going up and everyone saw the price going up, so they started investing into it. That caused the price to go higher and higher, but then eventually it came crashing down, went up again, and now it's completely volatile, really hard to predict what the stability of that company is. Generally speaking, when we look at past indications of previous companies, we might actually go ahead and select those stocks, but not necessarily going to have any benefit from that as well. Because generally what happens is we have fear of missing out or what we call FOMO when this happens. So you might see a stock price skyrocketing and then wanna jump in, but once that has already started to occur, you're not going to have all of the gains that you would have seen. For example, if you look at like Tesla for anything to that extent, if you invested back maybe in the early 2000 timeframe, maybe 2019, and you were getting it at like $80 a share, now it's up to $800 you know, a share, that would've been fantastic. But if you started buying in at 700 or 750, you're not going to see the same type of multiple multiplication or turnover or growth as if you were someone who invested when it was at that lower rate. So from that standpoint alone, we want to be better if you're going to pick individual stocks of trying to identify them before they start moving up along the lines. That's why, like I said just previously, picking individual stocks can be very detrimental and very challenging because it's difficult to predict and there's a lot of risk associated with that. But without risk does come reward. So you need to make sure that you're willing to risk some tolerance of losing that money if you're going to put in a company that hasn't grown yet. But that's one thing, using back performance or past performance as an indication of what's going to happen in the future is generally not the best approach to take. The fourth investing mistake that we want to avoid is trying to time the market. That is because oftentimes people are trying to figure out the best time to jump in the market or jump out of the market. And generally speaking, if you go in and out of the market, that is actually a recipe for disaster because you will miss some of the highest trading days, lowest trading days, and generally it won't average to growth for you for the long time benefit of your finances. So I'm just going to go through a few different questions that often you might think of about trying to get into the market. A question people sometimes ask themselves is, should I sell now before the market crashes? My answer would be no. You want to invest early and often, and you want to ride the roller coaster all the way through. Dave Ramsey has a saying, he says, the only people who get hurt on a roller coaster are those who get off in the middle of the ride. So you want to be really clear about this, that if you're going to be investing, you're doing it for the long haul. Now, you don't really want to be thinking about when am I going to try and time the crash of the market and sell my stocks that way, or even buy my stocks that way. Generally, you could buy the dip if you're going to be going in, but what I like to do is what is called dollar cost averaging. What that is, is where you just continuously invest irrespective of if the market is up or if the market is down. And by doing that over time, you're gonna be buying on high days and on low days, but that averages out over time. And that's the easiest approach to take, the most passive approach to take for individuals who maybe aren't as adept or understanding of what the stock market is always doing, but by doing it that way, you're consistent in your approach, you're gonna actually have longer term results that are better than if you were trying to time the market. For example, if you try to time the market yourself, you might actually miss out on some of the best buys possible, therefore you wouldn't see the type of growth in your overall portfolio. So it actually could have a negative impact on your total net worth at the end of the day if you pull money out or decide not to sell or decide not to buy at certain times. A good mantra to maintain as you're going through the process of investing and understanding the different ebbs and flows that occur would be to just buy and hold. Now, buying and holding is generally gonna produce the best results for you long-term. And when I mean buy and hold, I mean buy and hold index funds. And if you do that, that's gonna help answer a lot of the questions that might come up over the course of your investing career. For example, you might say, should I now switch over to bonds or gold? You might say, no, I'm going to buy and hold and just continue to invest in index funds. You might have other people say, should you go on and buy individual stock right now or sell your individual stock? No, buy and hold your index fund, just continuously do that. Because our emotions can get the best of us. We might even say, well, should I wait to contribute to my Roth IRA account? No, you should continue to do that. You should invest even if the market is going down and when the market is going up. It's just this type of mentality that is going to prevent you from making bad choices long-term. And that's why when you try to time the market, that is one of the most mis one of the most significant mistakes that you or I can make. Because if we do so, we're going to really damage ourselves long-term. Unless you're working for a hedge fund or you're a sophisticated investor that really understands all the nuance and you're trying to actually more day trade, you might do that, but generally speaking, the people who even do that don't have the same long-term results as just investing in an index fund because the market is going to continue to do what it's going to do as a whole, irrespective of what every individual company is going to do. So if you're investing in the total market as a whole, that's going to help you long-term. 
The next mistake you want to avoid is not investing in the like button for the YouTube algorithm. I'm just kidding, but if you wouldn't mind please tapping the like button, that would help the channel out a lot. And also it doesn't cost you anything, it's not going to take anything away from your overall net worth. It should overall enhance your net worth by encouraging you to have wise decisions for your finances that can overall help you make long term financial growth. So that's what I encourage you to do and if you wouldn't mind doing that, that would mean a lot to myself. The fifth mistake you want to avoid is paying high fees when it comes to your investing. This is your money that you're putting to risk by actually putting it into the stock market. When you pay someone else to manage it for you or you pay a group like an, a mutual fund to do this for you, you're basically paying them to manage your money and the information that they're going to use is very similar to the information that is readily accessible to you right now. So my encouragement is to avoid doing that and put your money to work for yourself. For example, if you were to pay a 2% fee to a mutual fund to invest your money and actually maintain that over a 30 year period of time, let's say from 1980 to 2020, if you were to invest $500 a month during the course of that time into a mutual fund that had a 2% fee associated with it, that would net you about $1.6 million. However, if you invested that same $500 a month from 1980 to 2020 and did not have a mutual fund doing it, you were just investing into the index fund that you could buy by yourself with paying no high fee associated with it, that would actually be worth $3.1 million. So you'd have nearly twice as much money at the end of the day simply by not having to pay the fees associated with a mutual fund. So you might think when you start getting started as an investor that 2% doesn't sound like much, but when your growth occurs over time and you're gonna have compound interest and all these things that benefit you in your overall portfolio, 2% of a high net worth can be a lot. So you wanna really try and mitigate that as much as possible. On that note, what I like to do specifically when it comes to investing into a low cost index fund is actually using Wealthfront. I'm not sponsored by them or anything to that extent, I'm just telling you what I do. But Wealthfront is an online robo advisor, basically an application that you can use where you invest into the stock market, into index funds, and you set your growth associated with your risk tolerance. So you basically answer a number of questions that will prompt you to decide what you can stomach. So if you're willing to basically invest in the long term and you're willing to ride the roller coaster all the way through, it will categorize that for you and then just automatically invest into the index fund. The fees associated with a wealth front is 0.25%, so 1.75% less than that mutual fund I was just referring to. So that's not going to have that much of an impact on you long term and it could benefit you a lot. If you're interested in actually signing up for Wealthfront, I have a link in the description down below. They can have your first $500 managed for free if you check that out. So just my encouragement to you, it might help you out a little bit. And overall, my benefit of going into index funds, whether you use Wealthfront or something else, is the lower your fees, the higher your net worth will be at the end of the day. And that's something you just wanna maintain. So if you're making wise decisions by doing index fund investing, that should really benefit you a lot. The sixth investing mistake that you want to avoid is thinking short term. We live in a society right now where it's very difficult for us to delay gratification. We think about how can I double my money by next weekend or how can I get the highest growth on this newest hottest stock or anything to that extent. But when you think about that, that is generally a recipe for disaster. You might read the splashy headlines where you see someone become a millionaire overnight or something to that extent and you say, hey, I want a, I want a piece of that action or I want that type of growth. But for the average person, the majority of people out in society, that have access to being able to invest into these markets, you're going to benefit much more substantially if you just take the long approach and you just continuously put money into the market into index funds, you buy and hold them irrespective of what is going on, and that's going to allow you to have longer term growth that's gonna compound over time as well. Because if you think short term, what you're going to do is if you don't see the growth that you like, you might stop investing or you might pull your money out, which actually can be very detrimental because you might even lose money from your investment and you take it out so you can't benefit from the overall growth that that company or that stock might have over time. So my encouragement to you is to just stick to it, maintain your long term philosophy, and that should benefit you a lot. And the reason for this is because compound interest is very significant. Albert Einstein said that compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. So when you think about you know, how you're going to invest into an index fund that might average you maybe a 10% annual return, which is very different than a 50% 50, 50 return or 100% return that you might see in the headlines, but when you factor that out over the course of time, let's say you start by investing $1,000, you get a 10% return, that's $100 over the course of the year. That doesn't sound like a lot, but if you continuously do that, and over the course of maybe 30 or 40 years, that, you know, just by investing that $1,000, that could grow as you're continuously continuously putting money in, that could grow well over a million dollars just by simply investing in an index fund that you know, results with about a 10% return. So it's just something to consider that if you're thinking about the short term, you could get lucky and you might get it right and actually become wealthy real quickly, 
But I would say for the average person out there, out of the 7 billion of us out in society, it would be very difficult for you to do so. So my encouragement is to really try to do what's best for you by sticking to a plan that is cohesive and clear and one that you can maintain without having to think too much about it. The seventh mistake of investing is not investing early and often. I'm talking about this a lot in this video because I really believe the importance of maintaining a long-term trajectory overall. Like I said before, you don't want to try and time the market. You don't want to continuously try and pick individual stocks. You want to make sure that you're investing early and often. That is because the earlier you start by getting your money to work for yourself, the longer, the quicker it's going to be able to turn around and benefit you because of compound interest. And that is something to consider. So if you're in your teens or your 20s right now, get started investing. If you're in your 30s, 40s, 50s, or beyond and you haven't started investing, start investing now. And that's because even though if you take time you know, in your 30s or 40s or 50s to invest, you still will benefit from it, but you wanna get started. So I'm just gonna lay out a scenario for you with a couple of different options and see what the difference is when it comes to timing the market. So let's use an example right now. I'll use my wife, Megan, as an example. Let's say if she started investing and started investing $500 a year for the course of 10 years. And during that time, that result would actually be worth $6,907 and 12 cents if she went ahead and just invested $500 a year for 10 years. So you might think to yourself, yeah, that's pretty good. You know, she's got a little bit of a return going on. Alternatively, let's say that Megan chose to invest on a monthly basis for a longer period of time. So let's say she invested $500 a month and she did that for the course of 40 years. So if she were to do that, her investments would be worth $1,197,810. So that's a very different outcome when you think about that. Investing $500 for 10 years just every single year or if you go ahead and actually invest $500 every month. So if you invest early and often, you will benefit from it. So if you can get a system up in place where you just have money automatically being deducted out of your account, putting into a Roth IRA, maybe you're fortunate enough to have a 401k, a 457 plan or a traditional IRA from your employer that that money could then just be automatically deducted out of your paycheck. And if you then put money into a brokerage account on top of that, all of these things can be streamlined and automated. And as long as you're cutting back on your spending and saving money, avoiding lifestyle inflation and avoiding debt, and then continuously going down this investment approach, you will benefit from that and should reach the types of results that you're hoping to have. With all that being said, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. If you wouldn't mind, please like the video for the YouTube algorithm. Help push this video other people might need to hear it. Furthermore, if you have any questions, please comment down below. I'd love to interact with you, get to know you, answer any questions on your behalf, and do any research on your behalf. Furthermore, if you wouldn't mind, please subscribe to the channel. That would mean a lot to myself personally, as I do everything I can to create positive content that makes a positive impact in your life by encouraging you and myself to lead lives of meaning and purpose, all while maintaining balance and moderation. And if you do subscribe to the channel, please tap the notification bell. That will notify you every time I post a video, which I do on a weekly basis. Once again, I'd like to thank you for watching the video today. I hope you have a wonderful day. Talk to you next time. Whoops.